to Upholstery on Broadway. Today we have a very challenging job to show you. Uh, this is an arts and crafts rocker, probably about the turn of the century. And uh, as an upholsterer, sometimes um, you have to be a little bit of a detective in order to um, proceed and do it the correct way. Now, uh, this piece has had an unfortunate life as far as upholstery goes. Frame is gorgeous, but um, it has been redone a few times and not correctly, I might, I might say. But anyhow, um, originally this had a drop-in unit, which um, um, was the ideal thing to do because uh, it would be a separate unit with a heavy tacking that's done with springs in it would be done off the rocker. And as you can see on this rocker, it has very thin rails and um, a lot of the heavy tacking really can't be done on this. However, that didn't stop some upholsterer from at some point to do that. As you can see, these large holes in finished wood uh, from coil springs at uh, that treatment. We're not going to do that again because um, client paid uh, to have a little woodwork done. Uh, in addition to this uh, bad thing, they came over the edge and they tacked to the front of the wood. So what we're going to try to do is restore it. We're not going to be able to do uh, coil springs. We don't want to attach too much to this. We're going to try to make it look as original as possible. Client you know, only has a certain budget on this. So it's up to me as the upholsterer. Uh, the challenge is to try to make this look right. Um, it is going to be an upholstered seat. It's not going to have springs. It's not going to be a drop-in unit. <clears throat> but um, let's let's start and we'll show you how, how we do something. Okay, like so this. the first step in our restoration of the Arts and Craft Rocker is to web the top, not the bottom. Uh, we're webbing the top. We're going to try to take a, a real low impact approach to this. Um, the frame has already been damaged, like I said in the introduction. So we're going to try to work with what we have. Um, so the less intrusive way to do it would be from the top. Um, so we're going to start doing that. Now webbing, now this is a seat webbing, it's a jute webbing, it's strong, it's going to support um, a body. And what we're going to do is start from the back rail. Now starting from the back rail is always the desired because the back rail technically is stronger than the front rail. The reason for that is it's a small area. <coughs> so what we're going to do is a staple, of course a staple, a pneumatic staple gun really <coughs> I don't like to use it all the time, especially on older furniture. It certainly is, gonna, is going to do less damage to the frame than, you know, big tacks, a big 14 ounce tack. So what we do is we secure the back. We're going to use our, our pronged closed webbing stretcher. We're going to put that in here. We're going to stretch and we're going to make sure that that is about drum tight. And we're going to staple the front. We're going to release the webbing stretcher. And grab a nice sharp pair of scissors. We're going to cut it close, probably about an inch and a half away from the staples, and then we're going to staple that back. I don't have to remind people how to be careful with these staples. 90 pounds of pressure, you wouldn't want one of those in your finger. So, what we've done is we've uh, put three webbings back to front, stretching to the front. And then side to side, we're putting webbings in, and we're alternating. We're going under, over, under, and then alternating the weave here. And I'll show you the last one. This is the optimal, we optimize the strength of the seat when we weave it. In other words, it will look like a lawn chair that most people are familiar with. What we're going to do now is we're coming, because this is over, this one's going to be under. This is under, this will be over. This is over, this will be under. What we're going to do is come over to this point. And we're going to staple this down. And then we're going to use the webbing stretcher to stretch this out. And then we're going to go right into the next segment, which is going to be burlap. Okay, we're done with the webbing. <clears throat> Again, this is the less intrusive, strongest way to stop the seat. On a, on a rocker that's arts and crafts, it's very delicate, I would call it a ladies rocker. Now what we've done is, success, we're successful here, we've, we've done a good seat, now what we need to do is cover this with burlap, and the idea is two, twofold there. One, you're strengthening the seat, the other is that you're filling in these holes uh, so that your padding doesn't fall through that, or appear as a checkerboard all the way to the top of the, to the fabric. So let me get that burlap. <clears throat> the burlap you start at the back also, and the best thing to do is start with the fold. You fold it. Go. So the next step, the second step, is to put burlap over the webbing. And this is doing two things. This is strengthening the seat overall, 
It's also more importantly filling in these holes. Okay, those holes are important to fill in, and the burlap is perfect for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the back with a fold. Let me just get a good fold. <clears throat> And we're going to staple that on the back. Now yeah, your fold should be about an inch. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Now, opposite side, which is in this case is the front, uh, what we do is this is your stretch side. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. If you were going to cut this from the roll, you'd cut it about three inches bigger than the area. This was a piece I hate scrap. I like to use, it's a good piece of burlap, but sometimes I like to use, try to conserve as much as we can. Okay, so this is the open side or the stretch side. Stretch, staple, stretch, staple, staple, stretch. Staple, stretch, staple. Now one side you can use as the fold side, which we'll use this side as the fold side. I'm not putting much of a stretch on there, but now this is where I make it up. This is the stretch side. You cannot fold and staple and stretch all at the same time. Okay, so now that we have our, our burlap on, uh, we're going to go to the next step. And the next step is to put an edge roll on this. Um, this is an edge roll. It comes, in, it comes in at least three different sizes, and you actually could make more sizes if you wanted to. But um, what determines the size of this roll is how big the piece is. A lot of people forget that a sofa, for instance, would take a bigger roll. It's called a fox edging. And then you get down to a finger roll, which is the smallest roll. And this is about the middle. And this would go the best with this, with this particular chair. And that's just um, your eye that tells you that. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to do this. It has to be put on the top, like I said, but just slightly over the edge. Even with the edge doesn't do what we want it to do, which is we're taking the curse off this edge here from the fabric. For the fabric would wear around that in no time. So what we're going to do is uh, right like that. And then if we get it secured on that, then we can cut it to here and then stretch it and then finish tacking. I'll show you what I mean by that. Again, if you were doing this at home, you'd be doing this with, with you could do this part with tacks, certainly. You could do anything with tacks. It's just that Staples are a little bit less intrusive on a small frame like this, a very delicate frame. So, we have a, a yardstick back here to stop it from rocking. And go like this. Safety first. And then in addition, I would advise anybody to be careful doing this because you're coming in it the opposite way. But this really tightens the edge roll up. So we don't want it to move at all. We want it really stationary. Because if it moves, it's going to move under the fabric and that's not going to look well with the fabric. So ultimately we want a nice looking piece of furniture that you can sit on a thousand times and not have it wrinkled. Okay, now that we have a, a edging roll around the whole chair, the next step is batting it. Batting, I'm going to do a post-World War II batting on a chair that is pre-World War II, uh, but that's okay. I mean, we're trying to duplicate what originally was there. And sometimes the, the post-World War II materials are the best way, although we are going to use a rubberized horse here, and that's actually not our next step. Our very next step is to kind of put a buffer in between the rubberized horse hair, which is, this is a full layer of AAA cotton that we're just going to put in there. Without this, you're going to have an air pocket in there, and that's not good. We want this to be comfy and to last a good long time. So just that, believe it or not, that will, that will give us what we need. And we're just going to put this in. <clears throat> what this will do is this will give us an air pocket. Uh, that uh, Just the oomph that we need, the batting, is so important. I mean, you want it, as I said, you want to give it some life. I'm just gonna staple this down. I'm actually gonna go to a bigger staple with this. I'm gonna go to a, we're using half inch, I mean 3 8 I'm gonna go to a half inch staple. Now, if you were doing tacks, you'd use big tacks. You'd use 14 ounce tacks. <clears throat> And you have 
try to angle it because the wood, we don't have much wood. We do not have much wood in there. It's a challenge. <coughs> so we're just going to do a few on the side. We don't need many on the side at all. Okay. Now what we're going to do after this, we're going to put a little bit more cotton in there. Okay, see what we're trying to do is build this out crown-like, like the, the coil springs would have done um, the second time it was upholstered. The first time, so we had a drop-in unit and there were flat springs with the welt around the top, almost looked like a cushion that was on there. The second time they came along and they put coil springs, they crowned the seat. We're kind of restricted to that because of the damage to the wood and we're not restoring that part of it. So what we're trying to do is duplicate uh, that crown without putting those heavy springs attached to the frame. Okay, so we're going to just um, we're going to do this quickly. This doesn't require much. You feather this to the inside of that fox edging. Okay, and then the next step, uh, we're going to take a piece of one-inch foam, and we're going to go right over this. One-inch foam is right here. And this doesn't get, have to get stretched very much. So what I'm going to do is show you how to staple and where to staple. Uh, staple. We have to come over the edge here, just over the edge, and we're going to be stapling right about here. I'm actually happy with the way this uh, padded out. Um, what, I, what I'm left with is I'm just getting a hint of a crown. Um, I, I kept to the shape of the seat. Uh, I didn't overdo it. Now the third time this was upholstered, it came to us with this big pad, a four inch piece of foam and just pretty much nothing else. A piece of wood attached to the bottom. And I knew even from a photograph that there was something wrong here. But as you can see, uh, this seat proportionally looks right. I mean, it's as close to the original design as we're going to get it. And I'm very happy with that. And we did it without really taking heavy hammering to this frame. As you can see it's very delicate. So really the next step is we're going to put a little bit more uh, cotton on here, exactly another layer of cotton. Um, and that is a buffer between the, the foam and the fabric. And it's essential that, that you put a buffer in between fabric on all fabric. Somewhat of a buffer. You can also use Daycron. The cotton is nice again because the cotton comes off the roll. You cut it with your hands. You lay it over. And you also cut this with your hands. There's no more tacking. You don't have to tack this. Bonded Dacron, if you're going to use bonded Dacron, you'd have to tack it again. We don't want to do that. So this is pretty much neatly, you know, you cut your corners like so. You cut, your, cut around your post. You, you get down here and you pat it down and then you trim it. And it always looks like you under, under trimmed the cotton. This is, a, this is one of those nuances in upholstery that really you have to be taught by a master upholsterer to know. Uh, most people would trim it right over the foam, but what you're doing here is you're duplicating the tension of the fabric being pulled, and then you, you release it. It looks like you've done it wrong, but you've done it right. And I'm going to do that all the way around, and because stretching fabric is such an art within the art of upholstery, we're going to save that for a separate YouTube um, on how to stretch fabric. So what I, want, I just wanted to show you all at home what type of fabric this was going to have. And I think the fabric, I kind of like the fabric that the client picked. She brought it to us. I think it really goes the arts and crafts design of the chair. And I'm just going to put that over to show you. This is actually a cut velvet. And of course all velvet, you have to make sure that you're going in the direction. Um, you know, the velvet always should be smooth to the front. In automobile upholsteries, it's the opposite. And I just wanted to show you guys at home. We're going to, like I said, stretching is a whole nother lesson. We're going to do that on another piece. because This is a very difficult piece to show stretching on, as it being a rocker. But um, there's the final, pretty much the final product. Thank you once again for viewing.